<laughs> my patient, now normally, I'm just letting you know how scenarios go, my patient probably self, either was extricated, either yeah, thrown from the vehicle, self-extricated, or fire extricated. Which one? Self he's self-extricated, he's lying on the ground as he presents. Okay, is my, is my scene safe, BSI's yeah. on? All right, um, is he my only patient? Okay, he's my only patient. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get additional resources. Is the fire already on scene, or am I the first on scene? Oh, uh, yeah, first on scene. All right, first on scene. Go ahead and get fire in route for help uh, and uh, for medical help, and go ahead and get PD for uh, crowd control for me. Okay, um, is there any need for uh, um, C-spine immobilization? I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, okay? I'm gonna have my EMT hold manuals, uh, manual uh, stabilization of the spine. <laughs> Uh, my mechanism of injury, definitely an MVC. I'm gonna go ahead, while my EMT has got the patient before I make real contact, come over to the vehicle, you're the vehicle. Do I have any kind of trauma signs, any kind of high index of suspicion to the windshield? Do I have any dents in the uh, dash? Is the steering wheel jacked up? Uh, the right airbags. Side, right side of the steering Airbags deployed, right side of the steering wheel. Right side of the steering wheel looks bent. We got airbag deployed. Okay, we're probably gonna have some airbag rash and uh, probably on uh, some chest and or abdominal injuries on that right side. All right, so I'm gonna come back over to my patient. Um, we've already gone down our scene survey. Uh, what's my general impression? You have a 25 year old patient laying on the ground, uh, difficulty breathing or shallow. Uh, rest, rest, respiration. Okay. All right. Line supine on the ground, shallow respiration. Sure. Middle aged, middle aged man. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what's my is my patient alert? They're A and O times four. A and O times four. Man, yeah, you make it this easy. On me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there any obvious life threats to the patient that I can visibly see? There's not. No life threats to the patient. All right. Or what is that? This is the time I'll do that. Uh, what's my chief complaint? Can he talk to me? I know he's A and O times four, but is he is he actively going to talk to me? Yeah, if you if you walk up to him, he's gonna look at you, and you can he can answer your question. All right, man. What what's hurting on you? What's your chief complaint? Um, his chest hurt. Uh, he feels like he can't he can't catch his breath. Were you wearing hurt? your seatbelt? No. All right, wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Yeah, your chest hurts, buddy. You hit that steering wheel pretty good, and that airbag probably slapped you around a little bit. All right, I'm gonna go down to my uh, my airway. Is it painting and open? All right, I can I, I can tell that he can hold his own airway because he's visibly talking to me, but I don't see any broken teeth, blood, vomit is coming from the mouth. Okay, I'm gonna make my way down to breathing. You said shallow uh, respirations and tachypnic. Um, sir, I'm gonna help control your respirations. I'm gonna have uh, one of the fire guys bring me a bag valve mask, and I'm going to control his respirations, bring them down, and get more tidal volume since they're shallow. Okay, sorry, you're recording me. I'm gonna get on this side to you. There you go. <laughs> I don't like reaching over. All right, um, that takes care of breathing. What uh, do I have any breath sounds that might be uh, out of whack? Do I have any uh, rails, ronca, strider, um, crackles, any any kind of abnormal breath sounds? Do I have equal rise and fall in the chest? Yeah, right? You have unequal rise and fall. I have unequal your, rise and fall? Your right side of the chest is. Uh, you're going to make you become a medic real quick. Okay. <laughs> right side of the chest uh, is not uh, rising and falling, so I'm worried about a uh, pneumothorax, possibly from trauma from that steering wheel. Uh, okay. So we're controlling respirations. We're, we're taking care of that on the EMT level with our bag valve mask, uh, but it is duly noted that we have a, we have a possible uh, pneumothorax. Um, with that being said, uh, rolling out tension, do I have any kind of JVD or tracheal deviation? Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get all of that on our secondary assessment. We're gonna drop down to our circulation. Um. Uh. Do I have? Do I have? I know I have a pulse, but is it regular? Um. What's the strength? It, and the rate. Um. And I'm checking radio because he's conscious. You have a rapid thready pulse. A rapid thready pulse. Rapid thready pulse. What's the rate? You have. Um, 90. 90? Okay. Uh, what's my skin tone and condition? All right. So we definitely have, uh, we have we're tachypnic, we're tachycardic. Um, 
like the hypotensive with our skin tone and condition, so I'm definitely worried about shock. I'm gonna immediately stop what I'm doing, um, treat for shock for this patient. I'm gonna put him in the uh, modified Trendelenburg, cover him up. Um, obviously, I'm gonna have to decover him when I do my head to toe exam, but I wanna keep him warm. Um, and we're already monitoring, we're already delivering oxygen therapy. So we're, we're taking care of shock. Is there any major threats to bleeding at this time? No, there's not. Okay, just uh, not visible, but I'm gonna take my gloved hand, run all under the patient, looking at my gloves to make sure there's no blood. No, I don't have any, no blood return. Okay, all right, circulation is taken care of. Um, this is a high priority patient by far. Um, so now I'm going to drop down to my uh, uh, OPQRST, this, he's experiencing pain. Uh, the onset was obviously driving. Um, does anything make it better or worse, that chest pain? Good. Nothing makes it better or worse? Provocation by okay. Yeah, he, he hasn't really moved a whole lot. lot. Hasn't really moved a whole lot? Good, we don't want you to move. We don't want you, we don't want you to become a paraplegic, right? Don't, don't bust that spine up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, quality. What does it feel like? Can you describe can you describe your chest pain to me? Like every time he tries to breathe, there's a center block sitting on the right side of his chest. Center block sitting, okay, all right. Um, does it radiate anywhere? Um, around just his rib cage. Around his rib cage. So it does not really radiate. I mean, is it moving or that's just another, that's another area, another painful site? Around his plate? Just from the middle of his chest. Okay. Beside. All right, on a scale of one to 10, man. Uh, one being not so much and 10 being you're in like a burning house fire. About a seven. About a seven, okay. Uh, and about what time, how long ago uh, did the wreck take place? Okay, so we arrived on scene fairly quickly after it happened, okay. Um, I'm sizing symptoms, not too worried about it. I can pretty much see all of that. I'm gonna go with chest pain, flank pain, um, signs. He's got a rapid rate of breathing. He's decapnic. Bye, Tammy. Uh, <laughs> Good luck on you. Congratulations. Good luck. Yeah. Um, allergies. Is the patient allergic to any kind of medications, food, and or allergens? He is not. He is not. Uh, medications. What kind of medications is my patient currently taking on a day-to-day -day basis to include vitamins? Nothing. Um, past medical history. What does he have? No pertinent medical history. Um, last oral intake. When's the last time you ate or drank anything, man? Uh, about two hours ago. About two hours ago? Okay. Uh, and events leading up to it, you ain't got to answer that. The red, right? <laughs> did you lose consciousness at all during this accident, before and or after? He did. He did not lose consciousness? Okay, someone just, how did the wreck happen? Someone swerved or was it his fault? Uh, dog in the road. Dog in the road. Okay, good deal. But you did not lose consciousness during the crash before I've, before I've come into contact with you. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and get my baseline set of vitals. Uh, what's my heart rate? Is it still in the 90s, or are we going up or down? Uh, it's, uh, it's the same. Same? What's my blood pressure? 145 over 100. Oh, 145 over mm -hmm. 100? Okay, all right. Um, okay. What's my uh, respiratory rate? 40. 40? That was a little joke on you. It's whatever I'm making. I'm bagging him right now. <laughs> so it likely was, but I'm controlling his ventilations uh, five, uh, one breath every five to six seconds, guys. I'm keeping him in that 15 to 20 respiratory rate range. My EMT is rather, right? <laughs> um, by the way, with that, am I getting decent chest rise and fall, at least in the left side? No. Okay. Um, the right side's still shallow? Okay. Uh, what is my uh, SpO2 right now? You are at... 96%. 96%? Awesome with assisted ventilations. Good terminology. All right, I'm going to start my head and toe assessment, okay? I'm going to try not to get in your way. All right, I'm going to start at the head. Um, I'm going to start off with letting you know as the preceptor that I'm going to be looking for decap BTLS in just about every part of this man's body. Uh, deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, and or penetrations, burns, any kind of tenderness, lacerations, uh, and swelling and or distension. Same thing. All right, so I'm gonna look for decap BTLS in the uh, posterior portion of the patient's head, uh, parietal, top, frontal. Do I have any decap BTLS? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna look for also any kind of decap BTLS, uh, zygomatic arch, maxilla, mandible, bridge in the nose, um, temporal area. Do I have any here? Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to look for any kind of bloody or any kind of discharge whatsoever from the nose, mouth, uh, which we've already covered the mouth is not, but any kind of discharge from the ears or nose. Okay, well, if there was any bleeding from the ears, I would do a, a halo test to rule out a, a basal skull fracture since this is a trauma. Um, also, when I'm assessing the airway, I know it was patent earlier, but I'm really dialing in now. Is there any missing teeth or any kind of dislodgement of dentures or any kind of choking hazard or any kind of bleeding that I can see in the mouth? Okay, I'm going to look at the neck. Uh, do I have any kind of uh, tracheal deviation or jugular vein distension now? I asked before, but it, it could be now. Do I have any? No. Okay, I'm also going to check um, the posterior cervix for any kind of step off of the spine or any kind of decap BTLS that I might feel around the neck. Do I have any there? No. I'm going to go ahead and put a seat collar on the patient. My EMT is still going to hold manual C spine until we get up to the board. All right, I'm going to make my way to the chest. Do I have any decap BTLS to the left or right side of the chest? You have a deformity on the right side of the chest. A deformity to the right side of the chest. I'm going to assume, um, is it, uh, does it appear to be a flail, a flail segment? No. Awesome. So we, uh, no, we are notating a uh, flail segment to the right side of the chest. Um, we are also going to listen to breath sounds. Do I have any kind of changes in breath sounds at this point? I listened to them earlier. You don't. No breath sounds. Okay. All right. So we notated a flail segment. Um, we're also going to make our way down to the abdomen. Just from appearances, do I have any kind of decap BTLS to the, to the abdomen? Um, besides uh, airbag. Okay, does he have any kind of pain to his abdomen? He does not. He does not have any pain. Well, if he did, I would, pay back that, I would palpate that quadrant blast. So I'm gonna palpate in a clockwise motion, all four quadrants, and looking for any kind of rigidity, pulsating masses, or tenderness. Do I have any of those? Okay. Um, also, the patient, he, he, he didn't appear to be guarding his abdomen at all. He did or did not? He did not. He did not. Okay. All right. I'm going to make my way down to the pelvis. Um, do I have any uh, leg? Do the legs look shorter than the one? Does one look shorter than the other? Okay. If he did, I'd be worried about a pelvic fracture. I'm going to be squeezing in and out um, for stability. Is this pelvis stable? No decap BTLS? Okay. Um, what about genitalia? Is there any need to inspect that? Okay. If there was, we would look at that. I'm going to make my way to the right lower extremity, filming around. Do I have any decap BTLS to the right lower extremity? All right. I'm also going to assess for pulse motor sensory in the right foot. Do I have all of that? Okay. All right. I'm making my way around. The left lower extremity. Do I have any kind of decap BTLS? Do not. Do I have pulse motor sensory in the left foot? All right. I'm going to make my way on the side to the left upper extremity, starting from the uh, shoulder down. Do I have any decap BTLS to the left upper extremity? No. I'm going to check pulse motor sensory in the left hand. Do I have it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Make my way around. The right upper extremity. I'm going to assess for decap BTLS going from the shoulder down. Do I have any decap BTLS here? No. Do I have pulse motor sensory in the hand? Mm -hmm. Okay. At this time, I'm going to have one of the fire guys assist me in interlocking arms and doing a log roll on the patient. Um, to the uninjured side, he has a flail segment on the right side of his chest. I'm going to roll him on the left side so that it don't cause further injury. Me and the EMT are going to interlock, me and the fireman are going to interlock arms as my EMT is holding C-spine with C-collar. We're going to go on his count. One, two, three. I'm going to roll the patient and we're going to check the, uh, we're going to check the posterior uh, upper and lower back for any kind of decap BTLS or spinal step off. Do I have any of those? No, I'm also going to assess the buttocks for any decap BTLS. Do I have any here? At this time, we're going to log roll the patient back down again on the head mass count. One, two, three, roll onto the backboard. Um, and we're going to get in route to the hospital. I'm also going to reassess my bottle signs, my secondary assessment, my interventions, and my primary ABCs. And I'm going to definitely assess my oxygen sats because he does have a flail segment um, and we're currently ventilating the patient. Um, five minutes out, I'm going to give my run report and I'll give a more detailed report when I get to the hospital. As a flail segment, there's nothing I can do as an EMT in the field for that other than notating it. Good? Any questions?